can see a few nails that didn't actually make it through the removing planks process. They actually tore right out of the, the plank. Mm -hmm. um, what we had to do uh, to get the frames out um, was remove enough of the bottom. I'll actually go back a couple of pictures to make that easier. Exposed, and maybe you can see it right there, original joints in the frames. Uh, the frames on any large sawn frame boat are typically called uh, double futtock sawn frames. Don't ask me to explain what the word futtock means. I don't think anybody knows. Uh, but it's they're because they're curved, and you're trying to, to make them out of essentially straight pieces of wood, even if you find curved trees, uh, what you do is you build the, large, the frame out of two layers of pieces that are cut to portions of the shape that you want to achieve with overlapping joints. And those pieces are bolted to each other uh, at the joints. We actually were able to remove enough bottom planking that we could expose uh, original joints, original being 12-year-old joints in the structure, uh, on one side. So that was really convenient because we could um, just sort of take that one piece out and then on the other side of the frame, uh, we ended up cutting a new joint that didn't exist in the frame before. Uh, it was it's sort of a compromise, but one of the luxuries, one of the, the nice things about this particular project, when it, the boat was restored, whenever they did it in the 90s, uh, they went to extraordinary lengths to find trees that had the right curve to match the curves of the frames. So. Um, the piece that we cut an extra joint in, uh, in many cases, was extraordinarily long, and it was no compromise at all to cut that extra joint in it. Uh, if the boat, starting from the keel up to the shear line, is um, 12 feet worth of frame, so to speak, that long piece might go like 8 feet or 9 feet up, all the way up into the turn of the bilge. So they actually found a lot of trees that had that the, the perfect shape in each particular case, uh, which is the way that this was done when the boat was built originally. Uh, if you don't manage to find those kind of pieces, what you end up doing is building it out of much shorter, straighter pieces. Um, so Do you know what kind of wood they used on the original frame? Uh, these are <coughs> locust, white oak, some red oak. I think it's whatever they were able to find. I know they did, they went to extraordinary, extraordinary lengths to uh, have a lot of lumber donated. Um, yeah. So, so when you these were built originally, did the guys who did the work sub, at, put it together go out into the woods and find trees that? Were you mean you're talking 130 years ago? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. If you're building a boat like this, uh, back then you would carve a model of the boat you wanted, mm -hmm. right? Because plans didn't exist back then. So you would, you know, just sit down at your bench, carve the shape you wanted, and then take molds off of that every certain space, you know, let's say every eight feet along the model, you know, in scale, uh, and then make patterns of those particular pieces, full-size patterns, and you would go out find the the and find the tree to do it. Yeah, exactly. And that's effectively what happened when Christine was restored. The only difference is the trees came here first because they were, they all came from uh, arborist businesses, you know. Uh, in fact, we have a sawmill set up out there now, and we are collecting and sawing wood for a project that uh, is hopefully going to happen in the future here. Um, I actually uh, was involved in a project in Maryland, which I'll show you a couple pictures of, um, where we built a 100-foot wooden schooner, and we went out and cut 300 Osage orange trees, which is a tree that grows particularly well there in Maryland, and there's a lot of them, uh, with patterns in our hands. Uh, and there were a lot of those trees, and this particular tree is really good because it grows really curvy. Uh, so it's really easy, yeah. if you have mature trees and you have access <coughs> to them, to go find them. Uh, Long Island is great because we have black locust and honey locust here, particularly black locust, which you see everywhere, and those trees don't grow straight at all. 
So if you can find a mature tree that isn't damaged, uh, all, one of the beauties of locusts is that the yield in the timber is almost the size of the log you see. The bark is very thin, and the sapwood layer is very, very thin. So if you see like a 10-inch tree, you're going to get eight and a half inches of good usable lumber out of that, and it's guaranteed to be curved some shape. So that's, it's the same process, you know, as it was 130 years ago. Back then, they probably <coughs> didn't have to go more than a half a mile to find all the lumber that they were looking for. Today, you have to go miles and miles and miles. You know, the lumber is out there, though. You just have to look for it. Or you have to have connections with guys who do tree work, which is great because they bring the stuff to you. Um, so we ended up taking the planking off, like I said, uh, cutting a joint on one side, finding a joint on the other side, and then it was just a, effectively a matter of cutting the bolts, holding the frames to e the sides of the frame to each other. Uh, and once those bolts were cut, we were able to remove the wedge, which was a whole process in itself, um, and take the pieces of frame out that were stuck in the mortise, effectively. And you can see that in that picture. That's a really good detail of what the mortises look like and the cutoff frame, uh, this being the, the piece that's probably originally eight or nine feet long, uh, which now has a joint, you know, and a piece that's anywhere from 12 to 18 inches long. Uh, and then the piece that had the joint that we were able to, to access, maybe like six feet long or something like that. Uh, and then we went through this extraordinarily long process of um, removing <coughs> all of the nails that were left in the frames as well as um, removing the nails that were left on the other side of the frame. What I didn't mention is that after we had actually uh, removed the inside planking, there's still planking, outside planking, there's still planking on the inside too. Uh, the boat has uh, inch and a half planking an inch and a half ceiling or internal planking inside too, nailed in both directions. Uh, and to get the frame off of the interior planking, we actually just reached up inside with a saw and cut the nails that were holding the, in, the, the planking on the inside to the frame, uh, pulled that out, and then we actually pulled all the nails out of the frames and punched the remove, remaining piece of nail that we cut off that was still sitting in the inside planking out of the way in the boat. Uh, and because we actually saved all the planking nails that came off with the planking, when we put the whole boat back together, we're going to use the, the same nails that we used, they used to hold the planking on to hold the frame to the inside planking later on. So in theory, when we're done, you won't even be able to see that we touched anything because there won't be any extra fastening holes or anything like that. Um, one of the beauties about working in the nonprofit world, it, especially working for boats like this is that there are a lot of volunteers involved and you can go to extraordinary lengths to achieve uh, goals that you would never achieve if you were paying for them, so to speak. Um, <laughs> such as removing every single nail that was in your way. Uh, we had a crew of guys working <laughs> for weeks at least, maybe it was a month, um, plugging holes plugging nail holes on the outside of the frames, and we actually bored every hole out to a new size, made plugs ourselves to fit in there that were made out of the same, hopefully the same material, made out of actually uh, the planking, of one of the planks that we had taken off the boat. Then the cutoff nails that were inside, we came up with a technique of boring around the nail, chipping out some wood, getting a pair of vice grips on it, and pulling the nail out with a slide hammer, which is a, a rod with a heavy weight on it. Uh, and then we actually plugged that hole, plugged the counterbore that we made, and um, the purpose of doing that was to remove the little bit of nail that was cut off and left in there so that that doesn't cause any damage in the future. It's sort of a compromise, you know, when, anytime you actually cut into a boat or do any sort of repair work, especially in this kind of boat, you have to make some <coughs> compromises. You have to make choices that you don't necessarily wouldn't necessarily <coughs> be making if you were building it from scratch.